All right, guys, uh, I'm just going to show a quick video showing how we ought to run camera acquisition now because uh, we're going to be doing a whole bunch of collects. I've made some updates. A, you have to ensure that you are uh, on the two singletons branch in the engine. The easiest way to do that is if you browse to the engine, you can switch to singletons. How do you do that? You can uh, choose switch checkout and there will be a um, remote origin two singletons that you can switch to. This is already set on the Jetson. Uh, I will make another video later on that shows how to compile everything on the Jetson, but when you're on Windows, if you wanna use the um, camera acquisition, you have to switch two singletons, and I'll merge that into dev shortly. Um, it's just because I'm teaching 593 that I wasn't able to merge that in yet. I don't wanna break 27 students worth of code. So anyway, I've compiled the engine. I have opened up and compiled camera acquisition. Um, camera acquisition is all good to go. We have it all compiled. Um, and then I will launch camera acquisition. So in release mode right here, I'll just pretend I already have the latest executable. If I launch this, we get the GUI. Um, I have two cameras that are connected over here um, you'll you'll see them when I list the cameras we have the color alveum which makes a little window here as well as the um, color monocular or I'm sorry monochrome um, the other thing is remember when you first turn the cameras on you want to give them a chance to synchronize and if you uh, start watching them synchronize you know that if they're in a slave mode they are synced to PTP and um, eventually this should turn to a small number like three or four digits and so we can ensure hey these cameras are synced they're ready to go now let's imagine we want to do actual acquisition I can go to the pipeline in our setup we're only using one camera but this works with an arbitrary number of cameras so I'm gonna come over here I'm gonna say hey let's begin an acquisition on the color and begin an acquisition on the uh, monochrome. So this is going on, we're acquiring at 20 uh, frames per second, everything is great. Um, let's stop that acquisition. And then I specified that my output folder is C colon temp T1. Inside of each time, every single time I do an acquisition, it will create a new timestamp folder and put the folder uh, log and the images inside of that folder uh, and then here's the the monocular or the I'm sorry the monochrome one so if I do like another short color acquisition we acquire again we see this third folder has appeared so I will stop now uh, inside of this setup here we have all of these images uh, all of these images as well as the third set of images Another thing that you can do inside of the camera acquisition folder, there is now a new convert images script. I can copy that convert images script and put it in the um, directory where the root of my uh, acquisition folder is. I can open up a command line and this is a destructive operation. Notice here I have the raw images that are 23 megabyte BMPs. That's a lot of hard drive space. Every image inside of here is uh, 2848 by 2848. However, there's been a lot of discussion that, hey, our, our pipeline doesn't need images bigger than like, let's say, you know, 1000 by 1000 or 1200 by 1200. So what this script actually does, it's just a little, a little Python script. And if we open it up, I'll show you inside all it really does. Um, it lets you convert the images and under the hood it uses image magic and it will just resize every image from um, whatever source it was whether it was bitmap or PGM it'll resize it by 50% and convert it to a PNG PNG will support either grayscale or color so it's efficient both ways um, all I really need to do in here is copy the convert to the root of the folder and I can say Python convert images and we'll go to um, let's say the um, 2506 yeah once 06 
and I'll say, hey, let's convert this folder first. So if I look at this, I'll hit enter and it'll say, oh, are you sure you want to do it? Make sure. Now this again is a destructive operation. So you say yes, it'll go through and do it. It's going to fire up 64 cores. It'll take a little bit of time, but it will re remove the BMPs and replace them with PNGs. And so here it did 165 and now uh, images every 23 megabyte file is now 2.5 megabytes, right? So this is a lot smaller. Uh, if I go and do the same exact thing where I'm going to say, hey, like, let's uh, convert images for the mono I'm sorry, the uh, grayscale one, that would be 2509. So I can say 2509 and I'll say, hey, convert you. Notice that, let's just do a quick show here. This has uh, almost one gig with 125 files. I will run the command to do the conversion. It'll, you know, take take a little bit of time, and it, we went from uh, 959 to 89 megs with 125 files. Again, they keep the exact same name, other than they are now a PNG file. Um, last, we'll do this this one again, the the third collect, which is 1.15 gigabytes, and that one is at um, 2548. So 2548, we will convert that. And we went from 52 files at 1.15 gig to, let me close it, it doesn't like refreshing, 129 megs. Um, and so additionally, when you're running your, your camera acquisition, you can, the auto exposure will be enabled by default. And so you can see that I will cap. Oh, I'm going to keep keep recording here. I had the wrong camera clicked. So if I go to my color camera, I can increase, for example, the gain. And as the gain gets higher, you can see that this is what my minimum frame rate is. So if I do something like enable or turn off auto exposure, continuous, I can like set it manually. Uh, and then I have a function of the auto exposure and the gain. If I auto expose once, it will take me to you know some good setting, but you have to make sure that your your exposure time will ensure that your maximum frame rate does not drop below your pipeline acquisition rate. Okay, so uh, you can do all that by setting this value. Now with a color camera, you can't acquire faster than twenty frames per second, but with the monocular, you can go up to like you know thirty or sixty or or whatever. All right. Uh, I think this shows uh, the default for how to use camera acquisition. Um, yeah, and then when you're done, you know, you can exit, uh, you can shut down the pipeline, you can do whatever you want. So, yeah, have, have fun with this. Let me stop this.